Just a few days after SpaceX's Starship Flight 11, something unexpected washed ashore in Mexico. Several pressure tanks from the rocket's boosters were found lying on a beach, still mostly intact despite the massive explosion that ended the mission. These composite, overwrapped pressure vessels made from layers of carbon fiber and aluminum store gases at incredibly high pressures. Their survival after such a catastrophic event offered a rare glimpse into the engineering hidden inside SpaceX's most powerful booster, but their appearance on foreign soil also raised new questions concerns. On October 16th, SpaceX released drone footage from the Starship Flight 11 test, showing Booster 15's final moments before its destruction. This was the last flight of the company's Block 2 Super Heavy design, and for the most part, it was a remarkable success. The footage showed the booster descending through the clouds with only three of its 33 Raptor engines firing, controlling the descent with precision. For nearly 10 seconds, the giant rocket hovered above the ocean surface like a floating skyscraper. But that calm moment didn't last. Within seconds, the booster ran out of propellant, dropped into the water, and then exploded in a spectacular fireball that scattered debris across the gulf. The aftermath stretched for miles, turning what looked like a near-perfect test into chaos. Two days later, one of the booster's COPV washed ashore near Mexico just 40 kilometers south of Starbase. Locals who found it described it as massive, about three meters tall, and surprisingly intact. Despite surviving both the explosion and impact, it had only a few scratches. The tank's durability speaks volumes about its construction. Each COPV is built to withstand pressures of 500 to 600 bar, several times higher than what's used in commercial aircraft systems. The tank consists of a thin metallic liner, typically aluminum, wrapped with hundreds of tightly layered carbon fiber sheets bonded with resin. This structure allows it to store helium used to pressurize the main propellant tanks and restart the Raptor engines during crucial stages like the boost back and landing burns. If even one COPV were to fail, it could compromise engine relights or destabilize tank pressure, making controlled landings impossible. These tanks sit within one of the harshest environments in modern rocketry. They're mounted inside Starship's aft section, just above the Raptor engine cluster, where temperatures during ascent can exceed 1,000 degrees Celsius. The surrounding structure is made from stainless steel, which is chosen for its high strength-to-weight ratio and ability to stand the extreme heat generated during atmospheric re-entry. Starship's design differs dramatically from Falcon 9's aluminum-lithium alloy construction. Falcon 9 uses cryogenic composite as well, but its main body relies heavily on lighter materials that must be protected by insulation and a blat of coatings. In contrast, Starship's stainless steel hull eliminates the need for heavy heat-resistant paint and can endure far higher temperatures without warping. During re-entry, parts of Starship's windward side are exposed to re-entry heating above 1,400 degrees Celsius, which the heat shield tiles are designed to handle. The underlying steel structure remains below its thermal limit due to a combination of active cooling systems and ceramic protection. This approach gives Starship a unique advantage over rockets like Falcon 9 or even NASA's space launch system. While Falcon 9 boosters must rely on thick thermal coatings and precise re-entry trajectories to avoid overheating, Starship's outer shell is naturally resistant to both heat and pressure differentials. Its stainless steel body can even turn a failed re-entry into valuable data. If the heat shield fails, the underlying steel often survives long enough for engineers to study how it reacted. In the case of Booster 15, the fact that a COPV survived the explosion and ocean impact shows how well these systems are integrated into the structure. When Starship's 33 Raptor engines ignite, each engine operates at nearly 300 bar of chamber pressure, among the highest ever achieved in an orbital-class engine. Once the Mexican authorities confirmed that the debris wasn't dangerous, they removed it safely in coordination with federal environmental agencies. Fortunately, COPV are not toxic. They contain no leftover fuel or chemicals, only carbon fiber, aluminum, and stainless steel. This isn't the first time SpaceX has faced such a situation. 
debris occasionally drifts into nearby countries after test flights, and SpaceX has a well-established process to handle it. After an explosion in mid-2025, large fragments from an earlier booster were collected off northern Mexico. But another notable case occurred earlier that same year, when fragments from a Starship test were discovered on the coast of Cyprus. That debris came from Ship 31, which broke apart during re-entry after a high-altitude flight over the Atlantic. Most of the vehicle fell into open water as expected, but lightweight materials, such as carbon fiber panels and insulation pieces, were carried long distances by strong upper atmosphere winds. Several weeks later, parts matching SpaceX's hardware were found by fishermen near the southern coast of Cyprus. With no Starship flights expected for the rest of the year, SpaceX's attention will now shift to improving infrastructure around Starbase. Teams are dismantling and upgrading Launchpad 1, finishing construction on Launchpad 2, and expanding production at Gigabay, the company's massive new manufacturing facility. Meanwhile, flight data from both Booster 15 and Ship 38 will continue to be analyzed in preparation for the next generation of vehicles. Interestingly, SpaceX also shared new footage from Ship 38's descent, and it was mesmerizing. The Starship performed a perfect landing flip, reignited its Raptor engines, and slowed gracefully before touching down in the Indian Ocean. For a brief moment, it seemed like SpaceX had achieved its first soft ocean landing. Steam clouds erupted as the hot exhaust met seawater, creating a surreal image but that success was short-lived. Moments later, the ship exploded, scattering debris across the ocean surface. Now let's check out the newly released footage together. Rancher is also extremely demanding portion of flight because we need the ship to scrub off all of the energy we used to launch the rocket. Uh, we have some tiles on the leeward side of the flaps here. Yeah, we're, we're looking good. I do want to remind people that we are pushing ship to the limits. We've done a lot of these missing tile tests. We did it back on flight 10. Every time we do it, we throw something new and the ship makes it through. This time, looks like we can see some clouds down there as we pass through 70 kilometers altitude. Yeah, the, the sun's starting to come up again. We, ooh, there we go. There we go. Vehicle is now at maximum dynamic pressure. All right, that was basically our reverse max Q. So, most aerodynamic stress that it's going to see during re entry, we just passed through it. So, we're past that, we're past peak heating. All right, the light show kind of calming down as we're starting to move into the lower parts of the atmosphere we should squeeze out there we've got a joke there's you spoke it again dan <laughs> I, there it is ship landing startup there's our landing burn Starship has landed. 